Frank suggested that I prioritize this set of cases, uh, the next head-to-head. -head. Normally, in a head-to-head -head case, there are two different patients with two different diseases. But in this case, you get a bonus patient. Three! Three patients with three different diseases! Ah, 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 ah. In each of these cases, the pituitary gland is enlarged, and on unenhanced T1 sagittal images, it has high intensity. So pause the video here and see if you can figure out what diseases these three patients have. Let's focus on patient one. The cella turcica is enlarged, and there is an expansile mass extending not only within the cella, but in the supracellar region as well. At first glance, it looks very uniform on T1-weighted sequences. But is it? There's a little area here with some darker signal. How about on other sequences? On T2, at first glance, it looks like very uniform bright T2, but if we look carefully, there are nodular areas that are dark on T2. Here's the corresponding CT scan. Those dark areas correspond to areas of calcification. This lesion is more heterogeneous than it looked at first. Now let's focus on patient two. This is a much more uniform appearance. There's a little bit of normal gland along the top of this mass, but this one truly is uniform. It's not invading into any surrounding structures, very benign in appearance. Notice how much the cella turcica has been expanded down here, right? There's not much motion up into the supracellar cistern, but there is a lot of benign appearing expansion of the cella. We can confirm this on CT, very benign appearing remodeling of the inferior cella with relatively little supracellar extent in a very uniform bright T1 signal lesion. Okay, here's patient three. In this patient, there is some remodeling of the cella, but there is also a lot of supracellar extension. If we switch over to T2, we have a very interesting finding. There is a gradient of signal from bright to dark through the center of the mass. There aren't a lot of things that can produce a smooth gradient like that. So, have you figured them all out? Do you want to pause the video again and change your guesses? Okay, here we go. Patient one. Heterogeneity on all sequences, even on the CT, is the hallmark of craniopharyngioma. And they can hemorrhage, which is what causes the increased T1 signal. It is the subtle heterogeneity in this lesion that is the key. Uniform signal that remodels but doesn't extend, extend much supracellar is characteristic of a Rathke's cleft cyst. Of course, some Rathke's cleft anomalies arise supracellar or spread supracellar, but this one is mostly pushing down and growing very slowly. This is not a sudden event. This is slow growth. Our third patient has apoplexy. Apoplexy is the term we use for sudden hemorrhage into a pituitary adenoma. The gradient of T2 signal that we saw was our first clue that we have hemorrhagic debris. Notice that there's less cellar enlargement here because the hemorrhagic component of this mass is a sudden event. So here's our three diagnoses, craniopharyngioma, Rathke's cleft cyst, and apoplexy. These can be difficult to tell apart, but there are some subtle clues to help you out. 